We are live. Uh, Morgan Reagan. Oh. Mo. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm uh, live in New Orleans tonight. Morgan's in San Francisco uh, at the NBC Sports California studios. And yeah, I haven't had a ton of time to process this. And so I am doing this on the fly. I really haven't talked to Morgan much besides some text before the game. And let me tell you, man, walking out of that arena tonight, I think I was numb at the end of the game. Felt it a little bit seeing some of the players and coaches walk wow. out. And then um, when I walked out of the arena is when I was like, oh, it's over. The, the season is over. And I think one of the things that gets me, Morgan, and I know we'll save it for the pod, is just how abrupt the season just – it's it's done. And they don't make the playoffs. It's it, – that, you know, even for me – at NBC, the, like some of my bosses were like, Hey, like we're going to, as my lights go down, um, we're going to give you a call. We're going to call next week or, you know, in the next weeks or whatever. So we can talk about the season, what we like, what we don't like all these things. And I'm just like, Oh, that hasn't, that part hasn't even hit me. Like we've, I forgot we, we have to do that. Like I'm not there and even saying bye to some people that because I'm not going to be back in San Francisco in this studio for no reason. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to see you like so abrupt. I, I didn't even say bye to people at Golden One Center. Yeah. Now it's hitting me a little bit. But like, no, I, I guess I mean, I get sad. I just get sad thinking about it, to be honest. And I know we're going to talk about the game. And I'm sure there's some fans you're here going. Okay, just talk about the game. What this person did there. We're gonna get to some of the game. Obviously, it's just this is my first time, even you know, really talking about it at any length. And I'm just, I'm feeling it tonight, man. It just, it sucks. It's you know, you have expectations going into the year, and when you fall short, it's painful. It's painful. You know, you win 46 games, not good enough to be in the top six. Would have been good enough last year. West was different. You get to a plane, you fucking beat the Warriors. And then you're going, I'm taking on a team. Yeah, I know I got to save some of this for the pod. I'm just, I'm venting. I feel like I'm I'm with my therapist right now. That's what I feel like. I feel like I'm doing a Zoom call with my therapist. How's the chat feeling? Uh, appreciate you guys being here late. It is 12.30 um, here in New Orleans as we hang out. And, you know, I think part of it too is like Morgan feeling like, it just bums because like this is this part's over, right? Like I know we're going to be doing content all off season. We're going to do a ton of yeah. NBA playoff coverage, but like it's not the Kings, right? It's not our we we care so much. I feel so much. I want to win so bad that when it ends, you're just like, shit, really? Yeah, you're and and I thought about that right before we came on. I was like, wait, our last like. King's night chat. And when I say King's night chat, it's King's night chat after a game, like post game yeah, podcast yeah. after a King's game where we'll have post game podcasts for playoffs. We'll be talking Kings all, all freaking off season long, but it it is, it, it's very abrupt. And I'm curious if it's going to like, I think it's going to hit me tonight when I'm back in my bed or right in the morning when I'm like, what, wait, I get to, breathe breathing i get to breathe that part sounds kind of nice i feel like i want to cry one second you're you're good if you need to turn the light lights oh, off okay. yeah, yeah thank you so much appreciate it i just was laughing at the timing of that where i'm like i just feel like i'm gonna cry and then you're like hey, did you need the lights you're gonna talk yes 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 Okay, you're in a hotel room in New Orleans. I'm in a public workspace. Like, what do you want me to say? Yep, 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 yep. Um, so tonight's podcast, we're going to go over the game. We'll talk about some of the big questions headed into the offseason. But just know that tonight, maybe the final post-game night chat, but we're going to be doing 
live stuff throughout the year, content throughout the year, and we're going to do a deep dive and the big off-season questions throughout the off-season. Um, but we have to start what with what's here, and that's the game. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight. I failed to mention Super Chats the other night after the Warriors game, and I felt sick about it. Appreciate everyone for donating, and I'll give you guys more shout-outs down the road. Amy, appreciate you. Um, donates 50 bucks, saying thanks for, for another great season, Deuce and Mo. Off to check the Tankathon for the first time this year and learn about potential number 13 picks. Yeah, now we have to care about the draft. I don't want to. I, I was done caring about the draft. Now I'm going to care about the Kings of a lottery pick. Wait, I forgot about that. Oh. That's life. That's life. Um, Deuce, because I know we'll we'll get to our sponsors and everything when we always get to them, yeah. um, all of our podcast partners. But just just a quick, just right now, just let me give a major shout out to Sharif Jewelers, Northwest Exteriors, and Rock and Soul Diner. And I mean, and they're, they're going to cancel they're, after this. They're going to be like, Kings can make the playoffs. Done with that podcast. It's, no, appreciate their support all year long. Having the local support. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Like just having the local support is just, I think is something that has been so amazing throughout the season. And I just, I love being able to partner with so many amazing people, but then like, I think about this whole platform and just how we get to connect with this community. And so, yeah, maybe I'm feeling it and we haven't even started the podcast. Okay. Let me feel. <sighs> yep. 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 Okay. I'm trying to remember how to do some of this stuff with this. Oops. That's not what I want to do. This is an example of a banner. Yeah, I'm just, I can't figure out how to start this. I'm using a new program, you know, of course. Let's see. You look like you're going to cry, too. Oh, I, I feel that way. Definitely. Well, I mean. What? I'm so confused. My, my like, it's all my stuff that, like, I use for this, like, the intro. I don't see the intro for the show now. It's not there. Then don't use it tonight, Deuce. Don't use it. It's, I mean, you'll be back tomorrow, even though you packed to go to OKC. Yeah. Oh, I got it. We're good. We're good. We're good. Woo! Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, oh, is my internet okay right now? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, you're good. Okay. It says connection is unstable. Uh, biggest thing you guys can do tonight, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. All it does is help our channel grow. So make sure to do that. And uh, let's uh, start the podcast. And uh, we'll do that in three, two, one. Hit my music. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. The podcast that you know. Welcome into the Deuce and Mo podcast. I am in New Orleans, Morgan Reagan in San Francisco. And unfortunately, we're doing a podcast following the Kings season coming to an end at the hands of the New Orleans Pelicans, who beat Sacramento tonight 105 to 98. The Kings do not make the playoffs, and they go an entire season without beating the Pelicans, who were without Zion tonight beating the Kings for the sixth time this season. The Kings now go into an offseason where they get a have a lottery pick now, but that means that pick doesn't go to the Hawks. That means they can't trade their 25, 26, 27 picks. They would have to go beyond that. There's offseason questions about Malik Monk. There's so much to talk about. But first things first, we have to talk about what went down tonight. I'm Deuce Mason. That's Morgan Reagan. This podcast presented by our friends over at Northwest Exteriors. Check out TrustNorthwest.com. Oh, Morgan. It's just when it comes to an end, it sucks. I'm, I'm feeling it right now. I felt it walking out of Smoothie King Center tonight. And uh, it's a bummer. I, it's, there's no other way to put it. I mean, I think we all had expectations this year that, hey, the Kings were going to be better. They're, they're going to get back to the playoffs. Like that, in my head, was really a question. And here we are. They missed the playoffs. They won 46 games this year. Not good enough to get to the playoffs. They won a play-in game. Send the Warriors home. Not good enough because they could not get it done. 
And I felt like tonight, more than ever, it was pretty simple. The others needed to step up. The others did not step up. And you saw how much you missed Malik Monk and Kevin Herter. You know, I'm sorry, I was just everywhere. How are you feeling? Oh, well, thank, thank you for asking. Um, I'm okay. I, I'm okay at the moment. Uh, I think I haven't really processed it yet. Um, I think in some ways I'm like thinking of all these stupid little things like, oh my God, I have to cancel my rent the runway so I don't get charged. You know, like now I don't have to pick out outfits, like all these little stupid things that I think I am trying to think about. So I don't process the sad part of all of this. And when the season's over, it's not, doesn't mean that the basketball season is over, obviously, because the NBA continues with postseason playoffs and everything. And it's exciting. It just sucks when you think about the team that you cover and they won't be included in all that. You will not be discussing the team that you know, like the back of your hand. And that to me really hurts. And I think one more thing to that, something that I kept saying last year during that awesome journey, that awesome ride for the Sacramento Kings was, Hey, you never know what's going to happen. I don't believe in the playoffs. Like all these teams are going to be better. Like, like we have to look around the league. You got to keep looking at the Western conference. These, these teams, these rosters are better. Well, the Kings were top three, one of the better teams in this season. I don't, I, I don't think enough people were looking around the NBA and especially the Western Conference all season long. I think they still just believe, well, the Kings were so good last year. Like, how can you drop off that much? But that many teams in this conference just got that much better. And I think now I'm to the point where even seeing against this team like the Pelicans, and I know I'm talking a lot, that you're just seeing a matchup nightmare in how many flaws you have and how many things you need to do. Do you think I I, do you think that if I like started crying right now that it would be cut up and it would go viral on the internet? Yeah, that, and it, people would be like, "God, I have the ick." How pathetic is that guy? Yeah, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, it's <laughs> it's so frustrating. Um, I know. It's just it it it's. I was telling someone. And I mentioned this to you too, as we were on the lead up to the plan. And we knew, like, hey, you're you're gonna be. That's the thing we talked about. Hey, you fall to nine ten, you got to win two to go in, get in. That's hard. That's yep. hard, right? And this team, it's like, can they really do it twice in a row? You know, for years we knew in like January that the season was going to be over, like mid April. They weren't making the playoffs. It was just done. You mentally prepared for it, but like when the team is you know, good. The Kings are a good team. They got a lot of flaws. You just don't know when the season ends. And when it comes to just such an abrupt ending, like game seven last year and like now this year, where it's just like yeah. one night you are feeling the joy of all joy. You beat the Warriors. It was such a complete effort. We were like, oh my God, was this a moment for Keegan? Like, is this his moment? And Keon, oh, he doesn't get rattled. And then like, Two days later, both those guys like have awful games, and then you just get smoked by a team that's dominated you. And it's it's sports, man. It, it's humbling. Uh, it, it's it's one of those things that like when it feels good, oh, there's oh. nothing like it. When you yep. that being at Golden One Center the other night, nothing like it. And Magic. then tonight watching the entire fourth quarter with how it started the Kings were like one of 12 to start the fourth and just going wow I'm just watching the end of the season before my eyes and yep. it's just and I'm doing it in New Orleans where everyone is losing their goddamn minds it, I, it it hurts I was curious about that because like obviously I'm in a space where I'm watching the key watching the game where the guy behind the camera, Josh, is also a Kings fan. Nice to have in San Francisco, right? And I'm, like, getting excited, and then the second half comes around, and I'm down. But I was just kept telling myself, like, I'm okay. Like, it's okay. Thinking about your position, being 
at the opponent's arena with their energy, knowing that your season is about to abruptly end. What Fuck. was that like? It sucks. It sucks. And there were okay. so many Kings fans sitting behind the Kings bench tonight. I was talking to a few of them before the game. Uh, these two showed up, left this morning, went to came, flew into town to New Orleans to watch the game. They were flying out tomorrow at 6 a.m. I'm like, God, you flew all the way here. for the, But, you know, they want to be a part of it. Um, yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. And that's one thing that I was curious about. I was like, what kind of atmosphere? You know, I think Pelicans fans have a reputation around the league as like, they don't really show up to games. They're not really into it. Dude, that place was loud tonight. Like it, it was loud. Like those fans who were there that night, they brought it. And I was like, this is pretty impressive. Let's let's kind of dive into things. Like, where do you think this went wrong tonight? What like what you when you just think about this game as a whole, 105, yeah. 98, Kings lose, seasons over. What what stands out to you? I have a couple of things, but where do you start? Yeah, I know because I know we've been everywhere with all of this, and you started this part of the podcast saying the others, the others not stepping up. And that was a huge part of where the Kings really, really lost this game. I think Keegan also getting banged up in that second quarter really screwed with him. His mentality, like it, he didn't look as confident tonight, even with his shot, with the way he was defending. So that was something. Um, I thought something as simple as the bad unforced turnovers by the Sacramento Kings. I mean, the one that we specifically keep going to was that Keon Ellis one down the sideline, goes down the other way, CJ McCollum, corner three, Kings come back, Harrison Barnes gets blocked on another offensive possession, goes back down, Jones corner three. Like, the swing plays that happened, they've happened in six fucking games now, okay? No, and no. It's the truth, though. It happened six games that those swing plays have happened, whether Alvarado or CJ or whoever the hell was involved with it. And the fact that it was happening in this game again is where I was just like, mm -hmm. okay, I know this is game. But anyway, just those are a few of the things going down the line of where I felt like the Kings lost it. Yes. I mean, we talked about this before the Warriors game. We said it before the Pelicans game, especially without Monk and Herter there. Fox and Sabonis have to be great. Like that you to win games, to win playoff games, to win, to try to get into the playoffs. Those two have to be at their level. They can't be off. And in addition to that, you need Keegan to score 20 plus. We said that was one of our keys. Keegan's got to score 20 in the game. Like, may not be 32, but he's got to be aggressive and score. And then you need other guys off the bench to step up. We mentioned Davion and Trey. Like, those guys have to hit shots. None of those things happen. And so you're left with a, a game in which De'Aaron Fox ends up going four of 16 from three. At the end, by the end, he was just like, no one else can do it. If we're losing this game, it's going to be because I, I I'm just I'm putting it all out there and yeah. I'm going to chuck here to try to get shots. No one else is making. It. This is going to be on me. And I thought overall, I love Fox's game. We'll get to that in a bit. But you needed the others to step up against Warriors. Keon Ellis and Keegan Murray combined for 47 points tonight. Those two combined for 11 points, and yeah. Keon had zero. So. That's a lot of pressure to put on a couple of young guys, right? In the spot, Keon for the first time. But Keon's thrived, right? Like, he's been doing really well. He was off tonight. And that play you just mentioned was the swing play. The two moments in the game that you just went, ugh. It was end of first quarter where they had four turnovers in the oh. final minute 30 of the quarter. They had five turnovers in the quarter. Four of them happened in the final minute 30 of the first. And that's the one area where I'm like, the decision making with some of the passing was terrible, yeah. today. awful. Uh, Fox had one late when it looked like the Kings were making a push where he tried to fire it to the corner for a three, and it wasn't open. Like I'm from my angle, I'm like there was no there. He threw it right, and Alvarado just caught it. I'm like, did he? Did Alvarado's jersey like blend in with the crowd? Like, did he not see him? 
Because I'm like, why would you make that play? Really quick, just to add on that, that's why I call some of these turnovers unforced. And then I go back in my mind, I go, but is there something else that giving love to the Pelicans, is there yeah, something else that they bring with their with their length and, and their disruption on the defensive end? But I and I look at some of these turnovers, I go, some of them were really just the kings and their concentration and their focus when it came to just throwing away the ball like that. Yeah. And they end up in this game with 15 turnovers. Actually, that number less than the Pelicans at the end of the night, but it didn't feel that way if you're watching the game. They were just brutal. The Kings, I felt like, off to a strong start. I thought defensively they were competing. I was like, okay, like Sabonis came out just like an absolute dog. He had three steals in the first quarter, yeah. dunking on guys. Like, okay, he's bringing. Then Fox had like 11 in the, I think 11 points in the first quarter. But yeah. the four turnovers in the final minute 30 swung the game. You go, you went from being up seven to like down seven in a blink of an eye. And then the start of the second quarter, the, 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 it just wasn't good enough. You know, like the, the Pelicans got it going. I thought, I'm looking back at my notes too. Yeah. The, they, Keegan, they defended the hell out of Keegan. Like they watched that Warriors game and, and saw that some of the looks that Keegan got, some clean looks, and were like, yep. That's not happening. Like, we are going to literally be all – we're going to be stay attached to him. We're going to bump him. We're going to be physical. He's going to get no space to come off dribble handoffs. They kind of, they kind of, they neutralized him with different guys. Najee Marshall, who didn't even play last game against the Lakers. But comes you, in and was a dog. He was. He definitely was. But you realize Keegan had maybe, like, three open looks off of a DHO or off of a Sabonis screen, like right in the beginning. But yeah. when he didn't make those, and then you're exactly right. When Marshall came in was just like a dog hey. on him. I that, was guy's like, a free, that guy's a free agent. I want him in Sacramento. Sign like, him. Get no, his no, ass that, over here. That's the type of guy they need. Like Najee Marshall is one of my top free agent targets for this team. He's tough. He's fearless. He talks shit. You need him on this team. I need Najee Marshall in Sacramento. Take him away. I like, I love the attitude. But yeah. Going well, back. I, 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 they defended the hell. I thought they made life, you know, to respect to what Keegan's been able to do. But it's also now as Keegan goes into the off season, like, dude, you got to be honest with yourself. You, you took some steps this year as a player. The three point yep. shooting went down. Someone in the chat actually mentioned his home numbers versus his road numbers. I don't know what the case, why this is the case. Do you realize that at home he shot 40% from three? On the road, he shot 31% from three this year. That's weird. weird. That's very weird. Yeah. Side note. Um, but Keegan's gonna have to like I I feel like we're jumping everywhere and it's okay because this is what this podcast needs to be tonight. That's what it let's um, just be real. It is. Yeah. Um, I just feel like Keegan. It, it, he went down in this game. What when was that? In the that was two forty three to go, and this felt big too, right? Two forty three to go. Keegan slips to the ground, and he kind of just gave up the ball to Brandon Ingram. I'm like, what the hell was that, Keegan? Well, he was hurt, and he left the game. Ends up starting the third quarter. They called it left hip soreness. I think. You watch the replay. Okay, might have been the hip. I think his ankle was bugging him too. He did not move the same after that. I think he's been banged up a little bit, fighting through it. He didn't look the same at all after that. Even when he got the ball in transition, he's not exactly the most confident guy as it is. But tonight, he was zero threat when he got the ball in transition in the second half. He was anytime he got it, he was immediately looking like he didn't have the explosiveness needed to put the ball on the floor and make a move. It felt like he was trying to play because they needed him to play. And because it was a winner go home game, if that was like game 27 of the season, I don't think he plays the rest of the game. Yeah, he was definitely, he, he seemed like he was limited after he went down and um, you know, not only there, but even on the defensive end, the way that he would get up into BI and BI making incredible mid range shots, but like, you still have to adjust your defense in a win or go home game. And when I say adjust your defense, I'm even talking about in as an individual, right? Like, are you, can you be more aggressive? Can you see what the refs aren't going to call? And I felt like at times, I felt like the refs were really inconsistent for both sides, for both teams. And yeah. 
And even like when Keon got pushed in the face by, yeah, yeah, Larry Nance. And it was just like. He shoved him in the face. What are we looking it, at? I, I do know. Before, before you get too far, real th uh, the chat mentioned this. And I, I want to mention this because we were talking about Keegan. Uh, Matt George put this out a bit ago, who's in New Orleans too. He said Keegan told us after the game tonight he pulled his groin in the first half, but played through it because it was possibly the last game of the season. Um, but I also think there was an ankle thing going on too, and um, he just lacked that. So if you if you had a groin injury, you don't, you're not going to have any type of explosiveness. He's already kind of timid as it, it as, as it is putting the ball on the floor at times, right? If he's got yeah. an ankle thing in his groins, but he can't do it, so. Good for him fighting through it. But, you know, he, he got off to a slow start even before that point uh, with his shots. Uh, he finished with 11 points, seven rebounds. He had a block, a really nice block on Ingram um, yeah. that led to a king score. He was 4-12. But, like, you're, you're not going to win a game if it's just Fox and Sabonis. It's just not enough. And no one else can manufacture anything. No one else could hit shots. I know HB ended up being kind of the other guy. So we should mention he had 17, but um, other than that, you didn't get much uh, outside of Barnes, Fox and Sabonis. The King scored. This can't be right. You said they scored 40 points outside of Fox and Sabonis. Yeah. That's what you, I mean, I, I saw what 58 for. No, um, no. Yeah, no, no. I so outside of Fox, so sorry. Let me just rephrase this. Outside of Fox, Sabonis and Barnes. How about this? Outside of Fox, Sabonis and Barnes tonight. This the rest of the Kings who played scored a combined twenty three points. Shit, it's in in that that number alone. It's like we we can say like that's not enough, but yeah. everything else wasn't enough either. You know, like even. Even when they were scoring, it never felt like it was this big momentum shift. And you talk about Keegan Murray and some of his shots. It's like, like I said, in the beginning of the game, he had some good looks even before he was hurt, right? It was, he didn't look confident shooting them. He didn't look confident going into them. So I was no. confused when I saw that because you had two leaders in Domas and De'Aaron who I thought were doing such a great job of setting the tone early. Like you said, Domas yeah. dunking the ball. De'Aaron, those 11 first quarter points, six of them in the paint, three of three in the paint in that first quarter, attacking the paint, getting to his spots. So, like, you start off the right way, and then as soon as you lose it, I mean, I was texting you like, that's game. That's game. And I think – and and I was texting a, a, a friend chat – and saying the same kind of thing. And they're like, there's a whole quarter left. And I'm like, no, no, no. This, against this Pelicans team, yeah. it's a different vibe. And I've seen it five times. So seeing it for the sixth time, I'm going to believe it if I see it. De'Aaron Fox finished the game with 35 points. Ends up being 12 of 29. A lot of his stuff late was short. He just, he ends up playing 42 minutes. Yeah, I felt like he gave it everything he had. He was competing defensively. And then he was just like, all right, at this point, I'm just going to chuck. Sabonis, 23 points, 14 rebounds, 7 assists in the game on 9 of 14 shooting. He's 5 of 5 at the free throw line. Fox, 7 of 11, missed 4 free throws. That felt like big at one point because he missed 3 of 4 when the Kings were making a run. Harrison Barnes had some nice moments in this one. 17 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists. I like some of the plays early where they were like, all right, if they're going to hunt out HB on defense, well, let's hunt out CJ. And... Barnes did a great job posting him up, getting some stuff in the post, which I liked. Um, he had a really nice pump fake and drew Larry Nance uh, off his feet. Went to the free throw line. He was yeah. two of four at the free throw line. Damn it, HB. Um, but outside of that, they got nothing. And that – if you would have told me before the game, hey, dude, you're going to hold – get this. Get this. You're going to New Orleans. You're holding them to a 105 points. They're without mm -hmm. Zion. And they're only going to take 19 threes or seven of 19. I'd be like, sign me up, please sign me up for that. Oh, and they're going to have 16 turnovers, please. Yes. But the Kings end up being 11 for 41 from three. They only score 98 points, end up shooting under 41% in this game. 
Um, you mentioned the swing at that nine minute mark. Cause I mentioned the end of the first, but that nine minute mark one, was the one for me too. It just felt like such a deflating blow yep. in the third quarter. The Kings get a stop. Fox is pushing him like, this is what you need. You need Fox. Kings getting a stop and Fox pushing because good things happen. Let's go. Look ahead to Keon Ellis. Keon Ellis hesitates it looks like he could have taken a three maybe put the ball on the floor kind of fakes a pass then decides to pass it leads to a three on the other end then hb tried to force one up block three you're going this was just an eight point game that could have been down to six or five with momentum in your favor and it just turned into a 14 point game you're down 14 on the road those are back breaking those are like good luck recovering executing those moments, executing those swings, whether it was on the defensive end to stop a swing or it was on the offensive end taking care of the basketball, there just something there wasn't something crisp about it tonight. And it sucks when it was on both ends of the floor. It sucks when you go down the line and you couldn't get that energy or that spark from anyone else even coming off the bench. And, you know, I say that Davion – Finished with his 10 points off the bench, um, two of six from three point land, four of nine from the field. You know, it, but like even that, it was like, great, good. That's what you want to see out of him, but you weren't getting enough production from everyone else. And so, yeah, those swing plays were so killer. And then you want to talk about one other thing that was so killer too, Deuce, talking about swing plays was when the Pelicans went small ball five. With Nance and Alvarado coming in for uh, uh, Valanchunas and CJ. And it was just like, oh, throwing this at Sabonis. Throwing this at this squad. They could not keep up. Yeah, their bench was amazing. 34 to 10 or something of bench points or what? No, 34 to 12 bench points tonight. Because Davion scored a late layup. Um. But 34, 10 from Alvarado. This guy kills the Kings. Like, God, you just want this guy you just would love to have on your team. 10 points, five rebounds, two assists, four of eight shooting, being aggressive, doesn't give a shit that he's small. He just attacks at will. You know, Davion lost him once. Davion got caught looking, and this is something he's talked about about his game before. Yep. When he on ball, he can guard. He gets caught watching sometimes. He gets caught ball, ball watching. watching. And Alvarado yeah. went, door on you, lay up, boom. Those plays hurt you. It felt like after the Kings got off to a nice defensive start, it felt like that defense just went down for them in the second quarter when the Pelicans scored 32. And even in that third where they scored 29, it's just like the Kings were just exchanging baskets at that point. It, it, that, it hurt them. It hurt them big time. But uh, Alvarado was awesome. You mentioned Nance. Yeah, I thought he changed the game. 13 points, four rebounds. He had three assists, two steals in 21 minutes. In 21 minutes. Yeah. I mean, what a luxury that is to have. And they they went, that B.I. Nance two-man game really hurt yeah. the Kings. Well, and that's what I was going to say. It wasn't just like his numbers and being productive in that sense. It was I. It was just a, a game-altering move by Willie Green, I thought the way that because I don't feel like that's something that we saw a lot of in five games against the Pelicans. If anything, it was the length that truly bothered the shit out of the Sacramento Kings in a lot of those games. It bothered the hell out of De'Aaron Fox. And that's why it was nice to see De'Aaron Fox actually be able to get his tonight um, because we have seen length disrupt his offensive game so many times but he stayed confident he kept attacking um but yeah again it was it was the pelicans making great Dude. in-game adjustments punking punking the kings once again morgan the bench stuff like Najee marshall at 11 points six rebounds like if you just looked at the bench rebounding tonight for them i mean we're talking about I'm doing the quick math. Their bench had 16 rebounds tonight. 16 yeah. from their bench. And we're not talking about them playing 40 minutes. They were aggressive. They were long. I mean, Alvarado had five rebounds. So you could talk about length all day long. No, Alvarado has the wheel to go get me a rebound. And the Kings bench gave you a combined 
seven rebounds. So the bench was 16, seven rebound advantage. We talk about scoring, but it's the rebounding too that can change the game, especially when Nance has two offensive rebounds. Najee Marshall, Marshall had two as well. Trey Lyles, man, what happened? Trey Lyles, scoreless, plays just 13 minutes, took one shot. His turnovers, too. I think Mike Brown did not like the way that he, what, stepped out of bounds and maybe had a different turn. I, I don't yeah, know what it was. Two turnovers, two turnovers in his 13 minutes. Yeah. And so, you know, his flow wasn't right. Everyone's flow was wrong. And then even when Keegan went down going to Sasha, you know, I'm like, we're, we're reaching. We're reaching. And I get it. I get it. Uh -oh. you, you were looking for something, but I honestly would have gone to Trey at that time. And then even Keon Ellis, you know, he was making mistakes. And then Mike Brown wasn't trusting him. And I think, I think Mike Brown might have played a little scared or coached a little scared in that way, being like, this is a winner go home game. I, I need people to play perfect. And you can't expect people yeah. to perfect in these games you're not going to coach perfect they're not going to play perfect and you just everyone's got to be on the same the same wavelength like can we go back to talking about that warriors game because that was our championship this year <laughs> morgan that's i'm glad you brought up that point though because yeah i understand sasha coming in like hey you know what keegan's out we need to manufacture some offense let's let's see if sasha can give us some juice out there maybe get some offensive rebounds god i got scared watching him defensively at times when he's like you know tap dancing out there, maybe coming out on Brandon Ingram. Like, oh, God. Um, yeah, I, I would have gone back to Trey, too. I think you have to trust some of these guys. You know, it, it yeah. is a final game. And, like, Keon was not – he was missing some shots. He got into some foul trouble, sure. That turnover he had was really bad. But I want this guy to learn from this. I want him out there. Keon Ellis – has been playing well for you. Keon Ellis, I, the Kings are not in even in this situation. Imagine if Keon Ellis was not a factor after Monk went down and Herder went down. Like, imagine if it was just like, we have nobody. It's just worth throwing guys out there. Or if Keon played and he wasn't what he was. The Kings would have been in the play-in. <laughs> I mean, they probably still would be in the play-in. But you know what I mean? Like, they made yeah. strides defensively because this guy and his offense got better. And the guy makes some mistakes. You take him out. I'm like, no, let him rock, man. Let him figure it out. He did go back to him late. I would like to see Trey, too. I don't know. Maybe it was Trey not healthy. Like, is he not 100%? It just felt like he was, he was just a non-factor out there. And he was so big for the Kings at times. And, you know, at the most important time, this is what happens. And this is what happens with the play-in, too. Like, it's one you have one bad game. Like, if this was game one of a series, you go, all right, well... How do we adjust here? What do we do with this lineup? Do we try some different things? There's no game two. It's you done. Have to make, you you got to be able to make those in-game adjustments right then and there. Right then and there. And we saw, like, the Kings, the way that they played against the Warriors, the way that they game-planned for the Warriors was, at, like, genius basketball. I was so proud of the entire coaching staff, all the players understanding and taking what they learned and put it into action. And then with this game, it's like you, you've had so many goddamn opportunities against this same team. You've even played this team without Zion in there. And you still yeah. couldn't and weren't making any type of in like even if you made your your adjustments with your game plan you weren't you didn't make any in game adjustments when shit was hitting the fan right and i think the in game adjustments if anything was playing more scared was playing scared with your pieces not trusting your guys and other and maybe even other guys not trusting each other out there and it went back to can we rely on De'Aaron fox to to take us home to do something for us and he he couldn't do it alone and that you no. know to me it just it didn't feel sustainable either because i'm watching like he played the entire first quarter like he did against the warriors he comes in the second plays the entire third comes back in the fourth and you're like dude how much does this guy have left in the tank like he's he's everywhere defensively and offensively he's trying to create stuff the pelicans are bumping around they're long they, they're switchable and no one else around him's in shots i thought I, I the Kings needed to do more of. They just, 
I felt like, especially without Monk, like run more Fox to bonus pick and roll. They finally started to do that when they got back in the game momentarily, and it led to some good stuff. It led to not necessarily getting the ball to Sabonis because they're playing the paint, right? They're packing the paint, but that Fox to bonus pick and roll, you know, gets that screen, can go downhill a little bit. Maybe he can get to the basket, which he did at times, or he was kicking it out, like got Davey on a couple of times, some open threes. I like how they generated that offense. And they didn't do enough of that. Uh, you know, um, it, it just felt like they ran out of gas, you know, it just, and this yeah. Pelican team. I, it... Well, well, you say that they ran out of gas. I also feel like this, this Pelicans team, like we keep saying, like they have their number, like physically, all these things, but mentally, mentally, psychologically, uh, it I'll feels tell you. There might what? be something to that. There might be something to that. And I don't think every player on the Kings is impacted mentally by them. But, like, here's an example. Trey Lyles got a pass in the corner for three. Alvarado is the, def the, the defender. What are we doing? Shoot over. Like, shoot the three. And I think it actually ended up being a turnover, I think, on that I position. Think, I think I and think I'm like, bro, shoot the three or post his ass up, back his ass down. You're a big guy. Back him down, get a double team, kick out, get the ball moving. There, there was there's a little uncertainty. And I don't know if that's like a mental thing with the Pelicans length. You're you're not seeing the, the floor the mm -hmm. same because they're long, but that's one where I'm like, Trey, bro. You're a big dude. <laughs> like, you can go Alvarado a little bit or take a shot. You know, like passing up those looks. Or even the one we kept talking about with Keon where he got the ball in transition. Keon, we've seen this from you. This offseason, your decision-making in transi transi transition has to be better. I think part of it, you've got two guys, young guys on your team, in Keegan and Keon, who aren't totally comfortable when they get the ball in transition because they don't have the handles, Right. And although they may have improved slightly in those categories, they're not strong. And when you're not strong in something, even it, you may second guess it a couple of yeah. times. Yeah, you and I, it. And I feel like maybe Keon was second guessing himself after some misses early, which is like, no, pro. And, you're and a forty percent three point shooter. Here's the thing, Deuce. They might be NBA players, but like, what's so it we have to remember in a year like this is that. He was put into this opportunity so late in the year. Whether he's ready to be an NBA player or not doesn't mean he has that experience. It doesn't mean that he experienced what he what he felt tonight can hopefully channel into something, into a, a fire, into something to make him a better, an even better player, right? Into a a player that wants to feel confident when they put the ball on the floor in transition or whatever. Even with someone like Keegan Murray, I, I you know, just going back to him really quick, like we talked about him on the post game show, and it's like people's expectations for Keegan Murray of being that big three. He's got to be that big three with Domas and Deer, and it's like, yeah, I want him to get there, but I wasn't even expecting him to take the type of leap he did this year, being that two way guy. Now his ups and downs are where I'm like in his third year in the NBA, yep, yep. he's doing that shit. Then I'm getting mad. Yeah. Then I'm like, you're in year three. You, you can't, you don't, you don't get that excuse. Like, yeah. Oh, it's your second year. It's cute. No third year. You gotta, you gotta work on this. You gotta work on that killer instinct. You gotta work on that confidence. All, you can have your little lulls. That's every human's going to, but it can't be like it was this year. You're six eight. You're strong. Get after it. Like you can. And tonight, I don't, again, after he had the the groin thing or hip, whatever they term it, he had shit going on. I don't feel oh, like sure. he had that. But you're right. Big picture wise, like yeah, Big we talked picture. about all year. Like you worked on with Fox last year, and you became a really good defender. Really good yeah. defender. This off season, can you like? I, Call up Alvarado and be like, can we work out together? You just defend me when I put the ball on the floor. <laughs> because the handles have to get better. Like, that's that's the thing that's where the Kings are at. I know we have all offseason to talk about all of these angles. But, like, yeah. briefly, if the Kings are going to get better now, it's going to be because Keegan takes a jump. And it's not yeah. just a 32-point game one night. And then an 11 point game the next night, right? It's you're right. It's doing it 
on a nightly basis. It's it, it's yep. improving your game. I think he's going to, but like they need that. They like this current team as it's constructed needs that. You don't know yep. if Malik Monk's coming back this year. You don't know what other moves are going to happen, but you know that if Keegan's on the team, like he's got to take a jump for this team to compete in the West. Look, they went 46 games. That shit wasn't good enough. You don't make the playoffs. And oh, by the way, what's Memphis look like next year when they're healthy? What do the Spurs look like in Victor's second year with whatever moves they make in the offseason? Maybe they get Malik Monk. Maybe they get Chris Paul or, you know, who the hell knows? They're going to be competitive. Houston. What's Houston look like? You know, Shen Goon coming into his prime, right? Jabari Smith improving. Do they make a big swing at something? Like, it's not getting easier you may have some other teams that are on the decline but it's going to be competitive right so it's on some internal improvement with what you have here and then big picture wise monty dear monty you gotta make some moves this year. <laughs> like oh it's all not right even a couple a of deadline <laughs> yeah we're running it back we ain't running and it you back don't, you don't do it out of desperation you don't do it because fans are saying Oh, you got to do something or it's bad. No, no, you got to make the, like, like there, these are smart people, in my opinion, in the front office that can make the right basketball moves, but you got to make them like yeah. you just, you, you got to find a way. Like if you lose out on Pascal Siakam because he doesn't want to be here or whatever the shit happened at the end of all of that. And so then you lose out on a whole bunch of other moves that you could have made. That's still like, that is like truly just going to be like falling on you. You have to yep. have plan A, plan B, plan yep. C, plan D, E, F, G. Yeah. That you, you just it have to like, there are things that got better this year. The defense improved. Right. And you saw some good things, but come this time, even when Malik Monk was here, man, we are so all over the place with this pod. Today. I know. I this know. Like we were just talking on the phone about this game. So it's fine. Appreciate the chat, by the way, the chat's insane right now. You guys are awesome. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for being here after what just went down tonight, seeing the season end. It sucks. Hopefully, like, this podcast helps get you through it a little bit. And we appreciate you guys hanging out with us all goddamn season. You guys are the best. So thank you. And thank you so much, too, for, like, dealing with us, too, on a night like this where we are all over the place. Yeah. This is instant reaction. And we'll definitely tie everything in a pretty bow when Deuce comes back to Sacramento, too. Yeah. I got a flight tomorrow at noon. I had a flight booked for OKC that I had to cancel. Mm -mm -mm. And admit it, you believe in jinxes, and that is why you didn't plan our night chats for because he usually like pre plans the night chats, makes links for them, and he was going to do it for OKC because he was going to head straight to OKC. And I said, Oh, why didn't you do them? What'd you say? I don't, What'd you say? I don't know, but you said, I don't want to jinx it. I don't, don't want to jinx it. Um, okay, a couple of things I did want to mention because I was looking more at my notes too at some specific plays. I mentioned that swing play in the third quarter at the nine minute mark. We kept talking to Keon one, but then you had a situation Mitchell and Fox at back to back threes. Keegan had that nice block and it was 69 61. Like it's still a game. Then a Davion Mitchell three cuts it to seven. So what do they do? B.I. Nance, little two man game. They go hunting on HB and Sabonis. They were seeking out mismatches. Like if one wasn't there, they're going to the next one. I thought they did a really good job at that. Uh, it's 81 74 close game. The Kings have a turn, a turnover. And then after a Pelicans miss Fox misses a transition three bad. I didn't like the shot. I felt like some of those shots in this, I wasn't in favor of try to attack the basket. Give me something. Then you had the sequence where Fox has that bad pass to the corner. It was to Lyles. Not sure why he made the pass in transition in Ingram. Super aggressive, like totally pushes the Fox. No call. Either way, he was able to make the jumper. We go to the fourth quarter. It's 83-74. It's a nine-point game. And I'm going, dude, you still got a shot. You still got a shot. But the Kings started the quarter in the fourth, Morgan, one of 12. Yeah, it was bad. I mean, they just they, – they couldn't hit a shot. They're, you know, it, there's, no, there's no excuses for it, right? Like, there's no 
if if I'm even going to say, oh, their legs were tired, there's no excuse. Like everyone's right. legs are tired, but yeah. you saw it affect the Sacramento Kings, their shooting, the fatigue factor felt like it was kicking in mentally and physically with all of them. And I felt like even there at the end, they were still trying to find a way to push through. It was just a little too late, right? You saw it when it was like a 10 point game with like a minute left. And it was then they're in the backcourt, putting the pressure on, getting these steals. And I'm like, you needed to do this with six minutes left in this quarter if you yeah. really wanted to have a chance. Yeah. Fox. Man, it's just when you look at that box and you see four sixteen from three. Oh, oh! He ended up with thirty five points. He had seven rebounds, five assists. He had three steals, and also had five turnovers. Some of those turnovers were just really brutal. Ends up twelve of twenty nine, seven of eleven at the free throw line. You know, I, I liked his game for the most part. I just some of the threes I just didn't love, and I I, I don't know. If that was just his way of like, hey, I felt the ones late. He took a lot late that were more like, all right, we're just swinging here. We're swinging here because yep. this this game's pretty much over. I, I we're gonna need a miracle. I'm swinging, but some of the yep. ones in the third, I wasn't wasn't a fan of. No, his shot his shot selection from beyond the arc wasn't the best. I think the mindset is exactly how you're seeing it. Is um, he? It wasn't. I want to be the hero. It was well. No one else is doing shit, so I got to figure out something. And this is where I got to, like, conserve some of my energy and settle for some of these shots. Um, I don't agree with it. What? Let me guess. You're looking at a shot chart. He was 0 for 6 from 3 in the uh, quarter. <laughs> yeah. It just wasn't good. Let's see. He, You, know so, you want to know what's crazy about it, too? What? In the first half... He was three of six. So that so he went one of ten the rest of the game from three. Yeah. Is that right? Oh god damn. One of ten the rest of the way. It was tough. Man. I mean, you know, some of your best players aren't shooting well down the stretch. I, I you can give love to the Pelicans defense, but then you look at the Kings and their defense tonight, it didn't look the same. It, it, it Look at the, the points in the paint for the Pelicans tonight. Um, yeah, they're running them off the line. The problem with running them off the line, I felt like the Kings were just getting in so many bad spots. I felt like Keon got blown by uh, many times tonight by CJ, which was tough. Um, yeah. They're kind of out of position and the help comes. And then they, they got a lot of easy looks at the rim. A lot of easy looks. And then they get in that two-man game, and Nance was a factor. Yeah. I mean, dude, here's what it comes down to. We, we keep talking about this game because this is the game they lost. It still comes down to what we said weeks ago. When we knew they were in the playing tournament, when we knew they were going to be the ninth seed. You're in this position because of the game you lost to the Pistons at home. Yes. That, that That's one game. That yes. game makes the difference. You're in this situation because you lost to the Wizards on the road. That's not – are you being serious? You lost to the Hornets. You lost – the Hornets beat you at home? Then you lost to a shorthanded Blazers team? That's why those games matter. You can have yeah. one of those, one of those in the season. Oh, two. Oh, okay, we didn't show up. But when you have four of those, and then on top of that, you have the blown lead in Phoenix. Twenty-two. You're up 22 with eight to go. How about the one at home? Not that long ago, after the Pelicans lost, where they're up four points with a, over a minute to go to the Suns. You win that game, things are differently. I mean, when we can literally say that many games they threw away, that's your season. I mean, you, this team should have won 50-plus games. And that's something that has to be talked about. Is like, why did those moments happen this year? Why... Did you fail to get up for those games? Yeah. You, and they're going to be with the NBA season. You don't have it, but you can't. Th that was a theme. That wasn't just a, oh, it happens. It was like, that was a theme to the season. It was a theme of the theme of execution, like yep. execution in 
late in games, I would I would go to like, okay, maybe it's experience. But then the fact that it kept happening down the season, I was like, oh, this this is a theme. This is a flaw. And then execution against some of the bad teams. It was that you're exactly right, Deuce. Like there's something more to it. Like, why aren't you playing the same style of basketball that you play against some of these better teams? I don't know if it's a mental thing. I don't know what exactly it is, but the fact that you couldn't make that in season adjustment is beyond me. Man. Shout out to the super chats. Appreciate Keegan Murray watch doing two bucks saying basketball purgatory. Oh, come on. That hurts. Sebastian the Spurs fan said, sad, silver lining, Kings are in the lottery. I don't want to be in the lottery. I don't care about the lottery. Oh, the it, I, I hate it. I hate it. Uh, Rob donates five bucks saying disappointing loss. Think of all the five games we lost that we would have won. Yeah, we should not have been in this tournament. Exactly what we were just talking about, Rob. A hundred percent. Thanks. Sebastian Rob. also says, Deuce, how does Smoothie King compare to the Golden One Center? I mean, it's not, it's it's fine. It's, it's old, I mean, it's right? nowhere near the look. It's older, but once you're in a game, like I mean, it's a basketball game. They got an awesome big screen. It looked cool. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, Peyton says, "I'm trying my best, but I can't think about this anymore." Thank you for the season of coverage. Well, Peyton, I appreciate, it, man. Thanks for rocking with us all year long. Also, yeah. Keegan Murray watched donating ten bucks. Said, "Sad. This is the last night chat of the year. Do some most. My favorite part of game day. Thanks for the memories." Oh. Um, I pr we appreciate that. Well, we'll do other night chats following games, but you're right. It's the final night chat of uh, after a game. We'll probably do after another one where we like talk to the fans with calls and stuff, and we just talk about the season. Maybe it'll be like a mega three hour pod or something. I love that Deuce just throws that a mega three hour pod. I can, I can talk about this stuff all day. You know? It's like, there, they, you know, it, it, it hurts. Um, and I, I just, you know, you just start thinking about as we're reflecting on this, like, okay, where did things go wrong? Okay. Well, we talk about the games you threw away. We talk about not making any moves at the trade deadline when other team made moves and got better, right? Like teams got better. Um, and you did nothing. Then you talk about, um, you did nothing. The moves you did make didn't really pay off from the off season, right? Like Sasha season, like what a disappointment, you know, like, just got hurt, didn't all really, it, wasn't a factor, it. like Brown didn't trust him, mm -hmm. then when he was out there, it was mixed. Um, Dude, this is, that, this is all for... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but... I, uh, the, the other, just, what? The other I, point I was going to make was just about how this season shifted. We knew it was going to shift dramatically when Malik Monk went down in Dallas, against Dallas. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and the reason why I cut you off with that stuff, because... It's like, it's, you're in New Orleans. I'm in San Francisco. We've been going on for an hour. And it's like, we could go on about that yeah. stuff for another. And I want to be able to like, give yeah. it the breakdown it deserves. Um, I, I want to put some other thoughts on the game in a second. Let's give some shout outs to the people who are watching us live. Thank you so much. Also, give some love to our local sponsors who have helped make this podcast possible who support us because you support them and uh, it helps us run a little small business here as we try to grow this thing so we appreciate first of all our friends at northwest exteriors they've been with us since the start of the season they put morgan in tv commercials where she played a mom of two married to a man that was in his mid 60s 70s or was it 70s are you married to that man can you confirm? Do you have two kids? Seven. Wow. We're learning so much about Morgan. Anyway, if you need new windows, <laughs> trust the experts at Northwest Exteriors. This is Northwest Exteriors. They're awesome. The guy at the Rancho Cordova, your house will be better with new windows, especially with the summertime coming up. Keep that cool air in. Make your house look sexy. Go to northwestexteriors.com, Morgan. You know why? Because they're simply the best. the best. Trust Northwest. I couldn't yell that because I'm in a hotel room and it's 1.30 in the morning here in New Orleans. Good job. Yeah. Um, And then obviously we're not going to have a Sharif Jewelers moment of the game. So shout out to Sharif. We're not going to have one? No. There's no moment. Uh, here's, a mo here's the only moment I can come up with and it's all only personal is before the game. Uh, they to the to our section 
on the broadcast brought us uh, free smoothies. What kind? Like some strawberries from Smoothie King. And I All went, right. you know what I did with it? Took a sip. Oh. I went like this. It's not Jamba Juice. And I threw it away. Good. So in front of their faces. Juice throwing the smoothie away in front of their faces is our Sharif Jewelers moment of the game. Make sure you're checking out Sharif Jewelers. They have a new location in Roseville, too, that just opened up. And it is uh, gorgeous, but we will be making sure to keep you guys posted on anything else that they are doing with that new store as well. Yeah, shout out to them. Uh, rock and soul player of the game. Oh, you know what? No, keeping it positive, giving it. Yeah, I am. I am. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. I'm giving not it. Worth it tonight. No. I, no. No. Deer and Fox. No. No. Sorry. Not not doing it. He's four sixteen from three. We're not giving him the rock. The rock and soul player of the game is a distinguished. It's a meaningful title. You don't just throw it out willy nilly. You don't just give mo you don't just give out the player of the game to anybody. It has to meet the standards, the prestige that comes with a rock and soul diner moment. Excuse me, player of the game. No, I, I, I to be honest, I, I think Fox like he played his ass off. He missed shots tonight, and that's the thing. I already know this, and I've already dealt with this. I've seen this in Discord, social media. It's a fox, man. He saw he, what he's doing. He's just chugging, blah, blah, blah. You didn't lose this game because of De'Aaron Fox tonight. I flat out. You did not lose this game from because of De'Aaron Fox tonight. Nope. You lost this game because you didn't get anything else from anybody else outside of Fox, Sabonis, and HB. Outside of that, that, that was it. And you needed more. With the yeah. injuries that you have, you needed more creation. And they don't. Big picture-wise, I'm going to say one more big picture thing, Morgan. Even with Monk, I've said this. They need another guy that can go get a bucket. Another yeah. shot creator. They don't have that. And it's lacking. It's it's It gets more exposed than ever. Sabonis doesn't do it. Keegan can't do it yet. HB yeah. every once in a while can, depending on the matchup. If he's got a mismatch, he'll go and get a foul. But, like, who's the guy that can give the ball and go, go make something happen? De'Aaron. That's it. Monk can, but he's not around. And Monk could be gone. So, you, you mm. need another guy, right? And that's what's hard. It's like, you know, you got to tinker. We felt so, this pain before, 98-99. Kings, went, they go to five games with the Utah Jazz, come up short, and you think, next year it's going to be awesome. They get their asses kicked the next year in the first round, all right? And then they made some tough decisions. And they made some tough decisions after that. It's going to be, we're going to have to have some tough conversations this season about what moves need to be made. So no rock and soul player of the game, but make sure to check out rock and soul diner. I'm probably going to go there tomorrow morning to get some move. breakfast to make myself feel better. Uh, Adam in the chat says, so we literally went 0 and sick to a team whose mascot is literally a fat overgrown baby. Well, they have a Pelican too, but yes, they're the baby. And they're all creepy. It's all creepy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the chat, Curation film says all the players stand around too much. There was there was definitely some standing around. And that goes to the other thing is the length. I think the Pelicans length just bugs the king so much. Um do you have any other thoughts on this game, Morgan? No, I you know I did before, but I think I'm feeling it. I think I'm feeling it like like where it's just it's yeah, it's not even about this game. If anything, it's about the six games this season played against the Pelicans. And what I will say, my last takeaway from this game, though, is it is more apparent than ever with this matchup what the Kings are lacking within their roster. And that's where I go big picture, what I want to see change. Yeah. I know you can't just snap your fingers and go, I want someone really long. Like, that's just not how life works. And that's why when someone like Keegan Murray comes around and he's a two-way guy, a young two-way guy um, that is developing his game on both ends of the floor and is seeing a lot of improvement on both ends of the floor, like, you keep working with it. And I think some they, people have so many they, different – They just construct a team next year that is only – made to beat the pelicans and no one else correct you find you find like a bootleg zion morgan 
six times? We were joking about like last time, like, I mean, it's losing five times to in the season, like that's kind of hard to do. Six times? Six times. I just can't believe it. I and they did some better things defensively tonight. They definitely did. And it's a little easier when you don't have to worry about Zion's monster body. Um, I mean, CJ, CJ was kill us from three. He took two tonight. One to two. God. Are you going out tonight? I, I don't know. I have to find out. I don't know. Oh. Um, if people are going out, I'm not going to go out by myself. Well, yeah. No, not at 1.30 in freaking New Orleans. That's weird. That's that's like 7.30 in Sacramento. Morning. I know, but it's just weird to go out by yourself at that point. It's like um, looking for trouble. <laughs> Morgan, we'll do like you said. We'll do a deep dive on the season and, and go kind of piece by piece on some of the big issues. Um, yeah, but this, this game to sum up this this game tonight. If the others weren't going to step up, you weren't going to win. The others didn't step up. You missed a shit ton of threes. Eleven for forty one. You don't get another game. There's no makeup. The Pelicans came in. They played together. Ingram did his thing still. Their bench was awesome. They just played an excellent game. And it sucks. Season's over. What are your final thoughts on this game? Well, two things. Someone said to me, telling you not to go out alone, said, all right, mom, Morgan's tripping. <laughs> um, and then my final thoughts about this game, you know, I really enjoyed the way that they came out in that first quarter. And I'm like, oh, shit, we're going to see a different Kings team take on this Pelican squad. And as soon as it went downhill, that feeling of not depression, not like just failure. Like I just felt like this season's done. This season's done. As soon as the game took a turn, I knew that the season was done and then I haven't really let it hit me. And so I'm, I'm appreciative of everyone being here and that we can all process this together, whether people are angry, sad, mad, happy, fine, maybe numb right now, but either way, um, I'm excited to process this more because I think I just feel, I don't know, a little lost right now. I don't know. So we're, it's like I'm at a loss of, for words because I just like it feels weird that it's done. I don't want it to be done. Like if I wasn't in San Francisco and you were in New Orleans and we were back at the studio, I think we'd be on for three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, if I remember right, after game seven, we didn't do a long one either because it was just like it is. It's like you reflect on the game and then it's like, all right, I need to think about this a little bit. Yeah. Too. I, mean, I think we hit on the angles of the game. You know, it's just Pelicans punk them. And punk. whatever you do this offseason needs to be with that in mind. How do you get tougher? How do you get more shot creation? How do you get some more dogs? And then you need some of your other guys to get better. It's 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 not going to be easy either. Monty's got his work cut out for him, for sure. <sighs> Final thoughts on this. Um, do you? I thought you, I thought you gave your final thoughts. On I was oh, going to no. go on the season. Do I you, gave my final thoughts, huh? Yeah. Do you view this season as a failure? It's a loaded question. It's a loaded question because immediately I want to say yes just because it was like playoffs or or it wasn't going to be good enough for me but at the same time i am feeling this way and maybe it's because i'm a, a kings fan where i'm like i'm appreciative of another year of competitive basketball with a season you're winning over 45 games and yeah. That shouldn't be my standard. That shouldn't be a cop out. I'm just telling you where my feelings as someone that has covered this team, has been a fan of this team all my life. That is just how I feel yeah. in this moment. But using the 
definition failure is just, it seems a little harsh for me, yeah. especially as this Western conference just got better and better, but you got to do better. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird because there are things, it's not like this season was like, there's nothing good. Like when I think of failure, I go, there's nothing good. This is awful. You lost all the time and no one got better. Like there's good that happened. Yeah. But ultimately, like, I think the word I would use is beyond disappointing. Oh, and yeah. It's beyond disappointing. You missed the playoffs. If you would have made it, your your first round pick that you owed to Atlanta, it conveys and it allows you to trade 25 pick or 26, 27, gives you the flexibility. Now, you get you now have a lottery pick, which is not the worst thing in the war, but this is not noted for its, you know, Top tier talent, who knows? Every draft I feel like has talent no yeah. matter what. But you pick in like 13 or 14. Um, Malik Monk's a free agent. It's gonna be hard to keep him. Fox was asked about it after the game. He's like, Yeah, I'll try to convince him, but like money, man. Like you you only have so much time in this league and you might have to cash out. Well, guess what? You lose monk. That's a big loss. That's a huge loss. So and, and Maybe if this season, maybe if next season leads to another like a, a season where you don't make the playoffs, then we're looking back at this season and be like, yeah, it was a failure. It was a yeah. failure. Yeah, I just think it's beyond disappointing because like I you, the, the whole draft pick thing, not making the playoffs, like to yeah. and just the, the thrown away games. It's it's less about tonight and more about the other things, about the lack of moves, about the missed opportunities the inconsistency, you never felt like they ever had a consistent rotation. And so, yeah, ever. my final thoughts in general on this season, we're going to go through the moment jar on the podcast and have some fun going over the good moments. Um, I'm with you. There's like, there's a, there is a perspective of like, God damn, I'm just, I am glad that I'm not watching 22 win basketball. But yep. like we we need we it's okay now, Kings fans start having standards. For sure. And and I I think that's where I'm at, where yeah. I feel like once I start seeing like three seasons of of wit of bas good basketball put together, my standards are going to be yep. different. They're gonna be like, oh, this isn't good enough for me. And it's not just because I got a taste of good, it's because yep. we deserve good. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing. There's no worse place in the NBA to be honest. And you can get lucky with picks and stuff, but there's no worse place to be than in the middle. And when you win 46 oh. games and you're like, you end the season, you're like, we're kind of average defensively. We're kind of average offensively. Oh, and some guys could leave and, oh, we don't have this pick, these picks to move. And the West is really good. That's scary, but you have to have standards. And that's just, that's up to the front office to, to make the right decisions going forward. But yeah, so I have the perspective of like I am grateful and like oh it's cool like I I'm acknowledging like these moments I'm acknowledging that I watched a playing game in New Orleans and like you know it's like cool that you're playing meaningful games late but at some point it's like no like you need to have standards of winning that's how a culture changes is having the expectation of winning and not just being happy to be at the dance it's been cool the last couple of years to be at the dance we're here we got invited oh my god they asked us to come play cool. Now, we're, we need to go. We we expect it. And, yeah. Um, last thing I want to bring up, too. Oh. This season's been, like, up and down for people, too. You know, even though it's been fun. It's, like, with expectations. We knew this year was not going to feel like last year. Even if it was better in some ways, it was not. Last year was magic. Even when the Kings lost last year, it was like, yeah, but look, they got their best record since 2004, right? Like, there there was no – no one was upset when they lost. Maybe a couple of times. No one cared. Right. Right? So, it was going to feel different. Um, and my last thing is just a thank you to all the fans who joined us after every single game this year. We did a night chat after every preseason game. We did a night chat after every Kings game win or lose. And we do it because you guys hang out with us and make it fun. This season when they lose is not hard, but it's a little easier when you can hang out with people and talk about it. Facts. Um, it's 
even more fun when they win and you could hang out with all these people and celebrate it. The amount of people I have met because of this podcast, oh. fans tonight in New Orleans saying what's up. I love the podcast. It means the world to us and that you would take the time to spend hours and hours and hours listening to our content, watching our content and supporting us. Your support means everything. It does. It does. It helps us grow this thing. Without this podcast, Morgan Reagan's not doing TV on NBC Sports. I'm not doing it. It's because you guys have had our backs and have been there through the tough times and the good times. So in all seriousness, it sucks. The season's over. We're going to continue doing Kings content all year, all off season. We'll do draft coverage. We've got NBA content too through the playoffs that we're going to be doing on our YouTube channel, but just thank you. Thank you guys for being special. Thanks to fans from all over the world who are Kings fans, even fans from other teams who are in our YouTube comments and give us love because they just vibe with what we do as a podcast. It means so much to us. So that I think that's why I feel tonight. That's why it's like, it's a sadness that the season's over. I care deeply yeah. about this team and probably to a level that's not healthy. Like I, yeah. like I, I care that much about it. I've cared about it since I was a kid because it was my escape from my crazy life. My dad being in our prison, my home life with my mom was crazy. Sports was always an escape for me. And when I wa watched Kings basketball in the early 2000s, I fell in love. I fell in love with that. And I went, I want to work in this business. I want to get into sports broadcasting. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. And the fact that I'm still able to do this and I'm in my hometown, Sacramento, doing it, I don't take that shit for granted at all. So I want this team to crush it. I want this team to win. And it it means more than, you know, it means a lot to me. It's like the Kings are, here's what I did know. When I was when young, Morgan, when I was young, I knew that the Kings were going to be there. I couldn't count on some stuff for my life. I knew the Kings were going to be there. And so I, it's always going to have a deeper meaning for me. Um, and I know I just wanted this long wrap up here, Morgan, but it, the whole point is thank you so much to all the fans. I know. You kept going, and I just wanted to add on to how special everyone is. So I'll just make it short. Thank you. We appreciate yeah. it. Maurice has got to drive back to San Sacramento. I'm going to probably go to sleep because I got to upload podcast stuff. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I mean, it's almost 2 a.m. So uh, we we'll appreciate it. We'll a hurricane. Yeah, I had one last night. Oh. Um, we appreciate you guys so much. Make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. We love you guys. But we got to go. I feel like I'm going to see you all in like 48 hours. So won't, won't be too long. Thanks for being here. See ya. <laughs>